Hello, everybody. We are finally going to modify the WL Toys motor mount. Now, what does it fit? It fits the 144001, it fits the 124018, and it fits the 124019. What's it going to do for you? It's going to give you three mounting locations for the uh, for the motor and it, it opens up the motor choices so you can run uh, 2838 2845 2868 any of those with the factory pinion gear and what's that going to do for you i think it's going to make this car faster than the 124017 that wl toys is coming out with but until i get it together and until and until they actually release one i don't know that for a fact it's just an opinion at this point so if you want to find out if my opinion is right subscribe or just come back and uh, we'll check it out once i get this one all cobbled together this is going to be a long freaking video but i don't know any other way to do it so what i'm going to do today we're going to talk about how to get the motor mount out of the car we're going to talk a little bit about the esc choices and we're going to talk about the actual modification of the motor mount. I suppose the first thing we need to do is address the elephant in the room and see if we can uh, get the motor mount out of this car just using a screwdriver. See if we can get these out with a properly fitting screwdriver. Well this one's coming out. That one is coming out. That almost looks like they used real Loctite on it. I don't know for sure, but the two motor mount screws came out without heat. Let's see what else we get. I've never done a voiceover this way before, so I have no clue how this is going to turn out. But what I was going to say here is that you can take all the screws out of the chassis brace but you don't need to just take the ones out of the back and then you can lift that up you can pull the motor the bearing support off the drive shaft there's just a little clip that uh, retains that and the motor mounts already loose so you just slide it forward get the wires out of your way slide the motor forward slightly then rotate it and the motor comes out and that's all there is four screws on the uh, chassis brace two on the bottom and then the motors out so what i'm going to do now i'm going to put this in a vise if you use the flat surface where the motor screws were uh, the motor mount screws went through the chassis put that against one jaw the curved side against the other jaw there's just a little bit of clearance in there and so you're really just grabbing the motor mount. Now you don't need to squeeze the heck out of it, just a light pressure. And you'll see, I'll illustrate, there's a little bit of a gap you can see, but I shove a piece of paper through there just to prove that the can is not getting crushed. So you've got clearance all the way front to back on the motor. The other side's touching the jaws, but this side has clearance, so it is not crushing the motor. Now we're going to pull the pinion out. My way to do it, and just keep in mind, I am using a 1 16th SAE, or Imperial if you'd rather, Allen wrench. And I work it in there first. It, it should, in theory, be a 1.5 millimeter, but the 1 16th inch fits it better. So I'll work it in there in case there's some glue in the grub screw. I just work it in till it's seated all the way, then I hit it with the heat gun. And I know there's going to be some dead spots in here for the voiceover, so I'm going to throw some music underneath it to kind of fill some of these dead spots. So I hit this with the heat gun for, I don't know, 30 to 45 seconds just on low. You notice the end of the heat gun's not turning red. And I'll, uh, I'll just, just enough to warm that thing up and break it loose. And then I'll swap ends on the Allen wrench to get my fingers away from the heat. And you'll see I just put a little slow pressure, and if you go slow, it's better, downward pressure to keep the Allen wrench inserted and a little bit of rotational force. Then I'm going to 
so that now that it's moved, I'm going to go ahead and swap ins on the Allen wrench. And now I'm going to put some uh, a little more serious heat on it now. Put it on high power. You'll see the end of it, the heat gun is getting red. You're not going to be able to use a hair dryer on this. I don't think it's going to get hot enough. This will make the... Uh, oils or the glue or something will smoke and you'll see a little smoke coming off of it right there and then just again just put a little slow pressure on it and you can't put much leverage on that little thing with that nubby little uh, end at the top but it's just enough to let it rotate once it's warmed up get that out and you don't have to remove it just back it out a couple of turns now i'm going to put a little more heat on there and i'm going to use a pair of screwdrivers because that thing literally they use some kind of funky yellow glue i don't know for a fact what it is i've seen them dip the screws in it at the factory and it, it's legitimately some kind of glue so you warm that back up and again about 30 to 45 seconds and then i take two screwdrivers and stick them down in there just put the blades in there the uh, one on top I turn anti or counterclockwise one on the bottom I turn clockwise and I'm just pulling it off now and the reason main reason I do that if I try to pry that's not in the vise very tight it'll just rotate in the vise so I turn each one of those just a slow pressure try to keep it even and when the thing gets part way off I put a little shield down there in case it popped off I didn't want it to burn my desk this desk is about 60 years old. It's an old school desk. And it actually came to me with some coffee stains and stuff. I just call it character. And I haven't refinished it. Haven't really decided if I want to refinish it because I like the character. But I didn't want to add to the character. So I put that little metal plate down there. Now you can see... There's no damage on the uh, output shaft of the motor, so I can use this in something else if I choose to. Now I'm going to put it back in the vise. I had to change screwdriver bits. You need to find a screwdriver bit that fits this. You can see I'm holding the motor, so I did not apply more heat. I think that those two screws were actually put in with Loctite. I don't know that to be a fact, but I think they were. So those two come out fairly easily. Um, they're not damaged and you'll see on that there's no damage to the motor mount either and I, I just take this thing as soon as I'm done I'll take it out of the vise with my fingers so it's really not hot it's not really even warm anymore it does require a fair amount of pressure but with the proper uh, size screwdriver I didn't have any issues As you can see, there's no damage whatsoever. I'm going to clean this up and I'll show you where I'm going to drill the new holes for this factory pinion gear. And you can see the glue up in that hole. Whatever it is, it's yellow. And I don't even take it out. I just leave it in there. But I will now resume my regular audio I'm going to take a quick peek at the motor here. Wow, that's a really big uh, ESC. I did not realize it was that large. That might be tough getting it to fit underneath the uh, body on this thing. Well, I'll deal with that in a bit, I guess. That's a big honking ESC. Of course, it's got the cooling fan on top, 45 amp. Platinum. This looks like a decent ESC. I've got the 45 amp version. It's waterproof, but to be submersible, you need to take it, the fan off the ESC. Just completely remove it. It's inside a case. I'll go over that in a little bit. 
neat features on this. It's got a low voltage cutoff. I don't know what the, it's programmable, so you can change it. I don't know what it comes set at, probably 3.3 volts. It's got overheat protection. It's got throttle signal loss protection, so it's got a fail safe in it. In theory, if you lose signal, it should just stop and you should not have a runaway. And it's got uh, short circuit protection and it is programmable with a program card. This is where I think a lot of people, I don't know, fall off the tracks. Uh, a lot of people assume just because an ESC is rated at some number of amps that you can run some number of cells with it. If you don't have this information, you know, if you want to try it or whatever and it burns something up, that's fine. But there is information available. This 60 amp will run on 3S, so will this 45, as long as you stay within these parameters. So they've got 2S parameters, 3S parameters for both of these motors. The the one I'm primarily concerned with is this, but just to illustrate a point, they've got different KV ratings, 6,000 for on-road use and 4,000, less than 4,000 for off-road use. So this particular 60 amp ESC, if you had a 7,500 KV motor, you couldn't even run 2S with this ESC. So these parameters matter, and they're just guidelines because they don't know what size pinion you have. They don't know what size spur gear you have. If you put a bigger pinion, it's going to increase the load. If you put a smaller spur, it's going to increase the load. So what I'm looking at here, they want on-road for a 3656, they want a maximum 5600 kV. So that's for 2S. For 3S, they want a maximum 3800 kV, but that's for the 3656. What I've got to try to do to interpret this is figure out what a 3656 draws at 3800 kV. All I've got is the information on the 2838 and the 2845. 2845 is pulling 57 amps at 3800. The 2838 is only pulling 47 amps at 3800. The motor that I've got is a 4370, so I'm up at 66 amps. So what I've got to do is find out if the uh, 3656 is is pulling 66 amps then i could run my car on 3s but if it's not it can't so it's not an automatic no matter whether it's a 60 amp no matter whether it's a 45 or 120 all of these other parameters are going to have some limitations on how many cells you can run with this they want you to disconnect the fan if you're going to run this in water i'll take this one apart so you can see what's inside it Okay, that's where your fan plugs in, is back in the back side. And it's pretty nice. It's got a cap pack already built into it. And it's a really nice looking heat sink. And the, uh, the whole board is potted in epoxy. So this shouldn't have any problem running waterproof. I would just simply take the top off, unplug the fan, and just leave the fan out of the water altogether. Put this back together and we'll talk about it some more. Now we're getting down to the juicy stuff. Uh, on this particular motor, these two holes are 16 millimeters apart. These two are 19. These are the two we're going to use. Now, if you want, if you had the correct pinion, the 16 millimeter holes would line up right there, and then you would have, with the correct pinion, you would have correct alignment between the pinion and the spur. So these two holes are 16 millimeter. These two are 25. We need two at 19 millimeter to match the, the two outside holes. These two holes are 25 millimeter. So we need to put it, two more holes in here, three millimeters offset from each one. We end up with a 19 millimeter spacing. I don't know what the new motor mount's gonna be on the new car, but until then, I like this system rather than the adjustable mounts or rather than putting slots in these holes, which 
is an option, but I don't like that option. And the reason is they did a very good job with location of this pinion gear. It engages into a nylon spur gear. I've never seen anybody blow the nylon gear out of that thing unless they used an adjustable motor mount and either didn't know how to set the lash properly or the screws came loose in the slots. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to add two holes that are exactly in line with these. There's no way for it to move. The nice thing with the bearing capturing the drive shaft, because the distance here is so small, there's no deflection of the drive shaft, no deflection of the gears, and it maintains proper alignment. Until Unless they come out with a better motor mount from the factory, I'm going to mod my factory motor mount. Since they haven't released any information on the new car, we don't know what's going to be in the thing. They could have another motor mount. They could be using these two inside holes with a smaller pinion. They could have made it adjustable. We, we just don't know. So they could be sticking with this gear. I'm thinking since they went to a 2845, they're probably going to go to a smaller pinion. Uh, don't know that for sure. This, these are all speculations until they actually put one of these into production and release it. So for now, this is going to be my solution. If they come out with a new motor mount and a different pinion size, I might change to that. But for right now, I'm going to stick with the stock gear, run this car on uh, 2S most likely, and I think I'll be happy with the results. I think it's going to be faster than the 124017 that they're going to release. Since this isn't a how to do this, it's a what to do, I'm going to just show you a couple of things. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use this 3 millimeter drill bit to line the hole up. That's on one of my 25 millimeter holes. So then I just need to move the vise over 3 millimeters, drill a hole, and then move it over 19 and drill the other hole. But since I'm going to be right on the edge of this bevel, I'm going to have to use a center drill. It's rigid enough that it'll it'll drill. It'll start my drill process on that edge. This is going to be pretty loud, so I'm going to mute the uh, noise. If I have something to say, I'll turn the sound back up or chop this up. However, I don't know how this is going to end up because I don't know how loud it's going to be. But I am turning it on. Contact. Three, two, one. In addition to cutting the new hole, this is also going to cut the uh, bevel for the screw head. Now I'll put in the 3 millimeter drill and uh, make the through hole. If you did this right, that's what it's going to look like on the front, and that's what it's going to look like on the back. So you'll still be able, if you decide to go back to a 3650, you'll be able to do that. You can use a 2845 on the inside holes with 16 millimeter holes. You can use the 2845 on the outside holes with the 19 millimeter holes, and you can use a 3650 or 540, 550 with the 25 millimeter holes. Let me grab some screws and we'll put it together. This is what they look like installed. And those are number three by 10. And I would put a dab of Loctite. The thing you need to consider though, before you put this in the car, is which way the wires are going to come out of the motor or where they're going to come out and which way you're going to route the things. So I'm thinking that if I put them toward the outside, that's going to give me the most flexibility. Uh, you may choose a different option or your wires may come out in a different place. But always consider that. So I'm going to take these uh, screws out, put a little dab of Loctite on them, and then we'll take another look. Looking at this on the other side, I might like that better. So what I'm going to do before I Loctite those screws in, I'm going to gently pop out the ESC. And this, since I didn't destroy the motor when I pulled it apart, will uh, make another project for maybe a boat build or something like that. So I will 
I'll stick these together somewhere. I decided to go with the wires on the outside. I think the ESC is going to function better, be easier to fit. That's a humongous 45 amp ESC. So uh, this is just a, a tip or the, what works for me. I've got both screws in here and they're snug down. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take just one out. And this one being snug is going to maintain the alignment. Put a drop of Loctite on here. And you just need a drop. In case you ever want to take it out, that's all you need right there. Put this one back in and then uh, snug this one down. Rinse and repeat. Oh, this motor feels good and notchy. Strong magnets. So be sure to put the uh, pinion back on before you slide this back in. But And I've seen a lot of people completely disassemble the car to get the motor in and out. It's not necessary. Just stick that in there toward the front rotate it and then slide it back into position and I didn't I haven't uh, tightened up the uh, grub screw on the motor yet wanted to be sure I had that in the right position first the original motor mount screws were an M 2.5 by 8 I happen to have some Allen screws and stainless that are M two and a half by 8 and when you drop one of these little screws on a tile floor that thing bounces 20 foot told that to my wife and she said well don't drop them hey when she's right she's right so again what I do put both screws in snug them up and I pull them out and lock tight them one at a time that way I make sure everything is in the right place before I start trying to deal with the lock tight the motor is now in and uh, the mesh looks good sounds good so I'm not going to put the uh, ESC in today because I'm waiting on the servo uh, don't see any point in having to work around the uh, ESC. So as soon as the servo and, and new receiver come in, I'll get that part of the project going. And then we'll go uh, do a speed test. Hey, if anybody made it to the end of this long freaking video, I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to check out some of these other videos that are going to pop up here, i got a long playlist on the 144001, and most of the things on that will fall over to the 124019 or basically any of these cars. So check those out, and uh, I'll catch you in one of those, or I'll catch you in the speed run on this one.